Hello fellow Scratchers, I'm Griff Patch and welcome back to part 5 of our two part series, Crazy Simple Raycasting in Scratch. Oh man, well, that hasn't really played out as I expected. But ha, not to worry, this has been so much fun. Adding in entities and exploring the more complex areas of 2D projection and depth sorting has been a blast. And if you've got this far, then today is going to blow your socks off because we are going to introduce loads of the features you've been asking for. Collectibles, extra enemy types, and more importantly, getting those enemies to chase us. Yes, that's right, so awesome. And so this is a great time to save our projects as a new copy, for this is episode 5. Guys, let's get scratching. I like to begin each episode by addressing any niggles from the previous episodes, and today I will start by pointing out that Nano has continued to look a little floaty from day one. The reason is that we always expect to see a shadow on the ground by someone's feet. Nano is no exception. Many of you noticed that I included one in my YouTube thumbnails too. So come on then, click into the pen sprite and the costume editor. If we zoom into Nano's feet, I'll use the oval tool and select a colour of pure black with no outline. And then draw a wide oval centred at Nano's feet. If we click the send to back, and then just tidy up the position. There. And testing the project we can see that this is looking really nice. But hold on, do you see this? This has been a problem for a while too, but with the shadows it's now more visible. Nano's feet appear above the wall. Interestingly, this is only the case when we are far away from them. To understand why this is happening, we need to see how Scratch draws a line between two points. We expect a line this long, but we get a longer line because Scratch adds on a nice rounded end. It's this extra half pen width that is making the walls extend down below Nano's feet. So this should be relatively easy to fix. We just reduce the line length by half of the pen width on each side. That is res divided by 2. So still in the pen sprite, find the define draw row script. We begin our line at a y of the variable height. We need to subtract from this half of the pen width. So divide res by 2, and pop that back in. Next we do the same for the bottom of the line, but rather than taking away, we need to add half of res to it. To do this we can just pop a res divided by 2 in place of the 0. Cool, let's test this out. Ok here we are, and that is looking good, yeah super! And zooming in and out with the fov slider makes it really clear that this is working perfectly now. Great. Now, since we are here in the code, fixing the wall heights, let's just quickly talk about the wall heights themselves. I know most of you have kept your walls just the same as mine, but watch this. You can have so much more fun. Bring in a multiply block and put the height on the right, and return it back from where it came. For starters, let's multiply this height by 1. Testing that and the walls are just as they were, but watch the effect of switching this 1 for a 2. Haha, <laughs> look, did you see that? The walls are suddenly all tall looking. That makes the level feel much bigger and more spacious. But why stop there? We could use a 3. Ooh, wow, or four. Oh man, this is huge. The level is towering above us. Either we are now ants, or we are in a very formidable maze. So what will I set this multiple to? I'm going to plumb for 1.5. That just gives the ceiling a bit more height, but it doesn't push it way above us, and I like that. So what's next? How about we add some more entity types? Again in the pen sprite, open the costume editor. We click to choose a new costume. What with all this extra height in the level, I want a big guy to fill the space, and I know just the one. Frank it is. Before we can use them though, we need them sized correctly. If we click into the nano sprite, 
we can grab that 200 by 200 square we drew in episode 3. To do that, we use the selection tool and draw a selection box to overlap the invisible 200 by 200 box. There it is, do you see? Hit the copy button and we'll use it again shortly. Now back into Frank's costume. Let's select all the parts of Frank's costume and group them together with the group button. And now we can paste in our invisible box. Oh wow, it was actually quite close to the right size, wasn't it? Before we do anything else, make the invisible rectangle visible by upping its pen width. Yep, there it is. Now we can select Frank, because they're all grouped together, and size them down a touch, and keep them centred in the middle of the screen, but with their feet on the floor. That is, on the bottom of this square. We should add a shadow under their feet too. I'm just going to nip into the nano sprite and copy it and paste it back in here. We'll need to make it bigger and send it to the back. Finally, select the sizing box again and set the pen width back to zero to hide it. Excellent! So Nano was costume one and Frank is now costume two. We need to spawn this new enemy type. Click into the entity's sprite, and here we are spawning 25 nanos of costume one. Duplicate the spawn block and we'll add five clones of costume two. Cool, that was easy. Let's test that out. Okay, there's loads of nanos, there were 25 after all. There should be five Franks somewhere. Oh, come on, Frank? Frank! Ah, something be wrong. I should have found one by now. So we spawned type twos. Hold on, hold on, look here in the define rotate view script. Oh man, we are always drawing type ones. That's a bit of a bug. This should have been changed to use the type variable. And yes, look, I can see a Frank there already. Yep, they were here all along. Only they were Franks disguised as nanos. And very convincingly too. You know, it would have been much easier to find these Franks if we'd been able to see this world map while the game was running, with all the entities displayed on it. And it isn't hard to do. Remember how we have set all the ghost effects to 100 to hide the map as it is? Okay then, so click into the stage sprite, and we'll make a new variable naming it Map Ghost. No, we are not going to be adding ghosts to the level, although yes, that would be fun. This will allow us to toggle the level ghosting effect on and off. When green flag clicked, set map ghost to 100. Things want to start hidden. Then when M key is pressed, set map ghost again, but we set it to 100 subtract map ghost. We can see this working by tapping the M key over and over. It now toggles nicely between 100 and 0. Great, well, that's going to make it easy. Now we just need to tell the other sprites to apply their ghost effects. Broadcast a new message. Toggle map. First we'll address the player sprite. Click on them and find some free space. When I receive toggle map. Then set the ghost effect. To our variable map ghost. I can tap the M key now and there you can see the player is appearing and disappearing obediently. Now we want the same script in the level sprite, so drag one in there. And now two in the entity sprite. And that's it, just those two. So let's give this a test. Click the green flag. Everything looks normal when things start up. But tap the M key. Hey, there we have the map and all the entities. Wow, there are loads of them. And of course the players in the middle. The fun thing is that I can still drag these entities around the map when it's visible. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I can bring them all in. And oh yes, that one was a Frank. You know, that poses an interesting question. Shouldn't Frank's hitboxes be bigger than Nano's? Because if we move them all over to a wall, we can see that Frank is now embedded right in it. Yeah, we need their hitbox to be much bigger. 
to fix this. Make sure we are in the entity sprite. Oh, tidy up that toggle map script that we dragged in. And then find with me the when flag clicked script. Here we set the size of the hitbox for all entities at 225%. So separate that off and we'll make a duplicate. The first we place before the first spawn block. This is for nano and 225% was good. But before the second spawn, this is for Frank. So set size to something much bigger. Let's say 400%? Yeah. Now run that again and press the M key. Woohoo, yeah, that has given them a lot more body. I can find them so much easier. And if I move them up against a wall, well, okay, they still overlap a tiny amount, but seriously, that's not so bad. I'll actually stick with this. The main thing to consider is that their feet are free of the wall, really. Hey, why don't we also change the colour of the entities on the map? We can match their colour to their type somehow. Um... From the looks category, bring in a set color effect block. I'll make the nanos set color effect to minus 10. But for Frank, I can set the color effect to 20. Let's see that in action. Oh, nice. Green for Franks and orange for nanos. Not bad. I can bring them all in to make a cool scene. Hey gosh, <laughs> this is such a laugh. You know, we could make a scratch movie maker with this, couldn't we? Say cheese, guys. Love this zoom slider. Ha! <laughs> but these nanos don't look pleased. Perhaps it's because they are sick of being stuck in one place, and I can't fault them for that. Guys, would you like to start coming to get me? I'm right here. We want to slowly move each enemy sprite towards the player, like this. It's easy to demonstrate by dragging them with the mouse, and when you forget all the 3D effects we've added on top, all we really need to worry about is moving the 2D sprites in the 2D level after all. And because of this, it should be surprisingly easy to get this to work. In the entity sprite then, scroll down into some free space. We'll trigger our scripts off afresh when I start as clone block. This movement will loop forever and we want each entity to first face the player, so point towards player, and then we simply move forwards. Oh wow, not by 10, that's far too quick in 3D space. Just move by 0.5 for starters, to get a feel for things. Well that was easy, I'm excited! Shall we run this project? Oh my gosh, they're coming! They are all coming and they're not happy. I can see them all on the map and oh, oh, they are cheating. They're coming through the walls. This is not fair. What chance does that give me? Ha, <laughs> no, we cannot have this. The walls must stop them. Well, if we think right back to episode one of this tutorial, we spent almost the whole episode adding good collision detection code to our player sprite. The good news is, we can copy those scripts and use them again for the enemies. Yay! So click into the player sprite. And we find the define move and the define try move scripts. These are the ones we want. Start by dragging the try move script into the entity sprite, and then follow that up with the define move script. Perfect. Back into the entity sprite. And we can move these scripts into some free space, tidy it up. Now find the little enemy game loop under the when I start as clone. We just need to switch out this move step block for the shiny new move custom block we just dragged in. Use the same distance of 0.5 and then make sure to throw away the old blue move block afterwards. Yeah, here we go, run the project. Okay, they're still coming for me all right, but pop on the map. Can you see there are plenty of entities still trapped on the other side of the walls? It's working! Brilliant! That was easy. We can have a much more balanced game of hide and seek now. But hold on, there is another issue that is becoming clear. These entities don't have any concept of personal space. They are literally all over each other. This will not do at all. Is there anything we could do? And yes, of course, if we just take a look at the define try move script that we borrowed from the player, the movement collisions are restricted to touching level sprites. 
So that stops them going through walls. But if we now scroll to the define spawn script, where we're first cloning the entities on the level, we have an extra check to prevent the entities overlapping each other when they spawn. Touching level or touching entity. Aha, right then. How about we duplicate this or and take it back to the try move script. And now pop it in place of the single touching level block. There, now the entity will not walk over a level wall or another entity. That sounds too good to be true. Only one way to find out, run the project. And here they come. Now this is interesting, I think. Yes, they are. They are colliding with each other and shuffling around to surround me completely. This is just so cool. Of course, I never added myself as a collidable object, so I can just walk through them. But but perhaps if I couldn't walk through them and I got trapped by the enemies, that in itself would be a really interesting game. I'm just saying. Wait, hold on. Why are these entities no longer coming after me? That's a bit surreal. Perhaps if I walk around them a bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. So this nano got free and has come for me. I think I can see the problem, though. Do you see how the enemy hitboxes are rotating on the map? This never used to happen. It's been brought in by the move scripts from the player sprite. I believe the rotation is causing the sprites to collide after they are rotated, and that prevents them from moving away from each other. So find our define move block. Here it is. Now we don't want either of these switch costumes or set rotation mode blocks. So take them out, but leave both the try move blocks and these lower ones get rid of the lot. Now let's try that again. Here they come. They're not rotating on the map. Check. And as they congregate, ah, I can edge away and yes, I think. Oh yes, I think we were right. They are free to split apart and come after me. Sweet. Bug squished. Now we are really gaming. There's just a big swarm of entities lurking around the middle of the level and then a spattering of others waiting to jump scare me as I come round a corner. Ah! Yes, like that. Man. So there's so many directions we could take this game. I guess the question is, what happens when an enemy touches the player? Well, it could be nothing. It could be that we get trapped by them and I can't move. Perhaps we can even push them around. That would be fun. What we'll do for now, though, is to add the concept of player health. Begin by clicking into the player sprite and find the define player tick script. This is our player's main game loop. So right at the bottom, if touching entities, that will be any kind of entity. Next, make a new variable, health for all sprites. And when we touch an entity, change health by minus one. <laughs> Ouch! Then if health is less than one, then we do something. Say game over, I guess. But for now, pop in a broadcast game over. And I'll leave it to you for an exercise to do something fun with that in your own time. We should just scroll up to the when flag clicked and set health to 100 when the game starts. There. Should we test that out? So there's my health at 100. Oh, but not for long. Something must have touched me. Run away! We really need to add some sounds when I get hurt, I think. That would be cool. <coughs> oh man, I wish I had a jump key to jump over these nanos. That would be so cool to dodge them like that. Again though, we'll need a way of telling the difference between nanos and franks. Oh well, for another time perhaps. Oh gosh, I'm getting surrounded! So we've covered enemies quite a bit, but what's the point of running around this level without some other goal? How about we add something to collect? Now I was originally going to reuse the entity sprite for this, but I've changed my mind now that entities can bump into and block each other. You see, I don't want my collectibles to block the enemy's path. So instead, duplicate the entity sprite entirely. 
and we'll name this one Collectibles. Then in the scripts, what do we need to change? Well, we only want to spawn one type of collectible at present, so remove the second set color, size, and spawn blocks. We'll also spawn 10 collectibles. And the type, that can be a costume number three. We'll add that costume in a moment. And then scroll down to the when I start as clone loop. Collectibles don't follow the player, so remove the point in direction and the move blocks. Okay, so costume number three. Click into the pen sprite and let's look at the costumes. Now I'm going to choose a third costume from the library. I'm after something nice and bright. I think a star will be perfect. Now I'm going to go back to Nano and copy the 200 by 200 square yet again. Then back into the star, group the whole costume together before pasting the invisible box and give it some pen width. Now I'll move the star down just a touch so it's under the player's eyeline. Now I want this star to shine, so draw a circle around the entire star. We can send it to the back to position it nicely in the centre of the star, and then change the fill to be a circular gradient. The left colour we make pure white, and the right hand colour we can switch to transparent, like so. Oh, that's going to look great on the dark background. That just leaves us to change the square's pen width to zero to hide it, and we are good to test. Oh cool, I can see a star in the background there, and on closer inspection, oh, we have two of them, and they do look nice. I'm loving that very much. Get away, <sighs> nanos. These are not yours, they are mine. <sighs> well, I'm pretty sure they are mine anyway. Oh, I really want to be able to collect these. Okay, that can't be hard, can it? You don't need Griff Patch to teach you this one. Find the When I Start as Clone Forever Loop in the collectible sprite. We want to check if they are touching the player sprite. And now we definitely need a sound. I think there's one in the sound library named Collect. Nice, that will do fine. So if we touch the player, start the sound, collect. Then from the control section, we want the delete this clone block. There it is. So play the sound and delete the collectible. Neat. I think that deserves a test. Ping. Oh, guys, you noticed that? Sorry, coming through. Yes, I've still got two health. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Luckily, I haven't implemented that yet. <laughs> So it's cool how these collectibles are all scattered around, but I have no idea how many there are left to collect. So let's make a counter. Make a new variable, naming it stars, for all sprites. Then find the when flag clicked. And before we spawn any of these new collectibles, we'll set stars to zero. Then scroll down, find the when I start as clone, Change stars by one. Now each time we create a new star, we'll count it in this variable. And consequently, when we collect a star, we change stars by minus one to count them back down. Now this stars counter is really boring. You might want to spruce it up by following my awesome number counter tutorial from just a few weeks ago. There's a link under the video if you can't find it. However, the good news is, this does appear to be working great. Oh, ah, oh, they got me there. Definitely need some sound or graphical feedback to let me know I'm being hurt. Right, come on, I'm going to hide the rest of these variables and give this a proper play. Can I collect all the stars without losing all 100 health? And while I do this, I'm sorry to say that we have come to the end of another episode. Is this the end of the Raycasting series? I'd have to say no because there's still projectiles, jumping, level progression and minimap, end screen and perhaps a look at even texture mapping. <laughs> Who knows? I'll put a poll on my channel to see what the general consensus is. But I do feel that after five weeks of raycasting, it may be time to do something a little different next week. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and do take a moment to subscribe to the channel to avoid the horrible possibility of being late to my next video. If you've been wondering how come some scratches are getting to see my videos early, then that's because they have opted in to join my early access channel membership. And they're also enjoying more direct contact with me via priority comments. So cool! Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a great week ahead and scratch on, guys!